Welcome. Here we are back again with 30 Days Lost in Space. We're over halfway through now, and this is day 16 to 20. In this, we're going to be looking at another couple of components. We're going to be looking at this rotary encoder. And we're going to be looking at this seven segment display. All right, sounds fun. Let's get started. Here's the circuit for today's lesson. We're not using the breadboard at all. We're simply connecting the seven segment display straight to the hero board. There's four pins on the display. Ground, which is the black, plus five volts, which is the red, and there's a DO and a clock pin. And those are connected here on pins five and six. So first, a little information about how to communicate with this seven segment display. As you can see from the diagram here, each of the elements corresponds to an individual LED, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And there's a decimal point. If you notice, there are exactly eight little LEDs in this display for each digit. Therefore, one binary byte of eight bits is perfect. So we're gonna communicate with the display by setting the bit corresponding to which of the little segments we want lit. And that will be sent over the DIO pin, the digital input output pin, and synchronized by using the clock signal. So let's take a look at the program. But first, we need to download a special library to help us talk to the display. And if you remember, we did this for the keypad in an earlier lesson, we had to install a library into our Arduino. Now, in this case, this display doesn't seem to have a library that's available in the standard list of libraries. So in the course, they've actually provided a link here for you to download the library. And here we can see the list of the libraries that we have available. And we want this seven segment display, seven segment display library. And you can see at the bottom left, it's downloaded that zip file. So back in the code window in the Arduino app, we need to go up to the sketch menu, include library, add zip library, and point, find the library, the zip file that we downloaded, here it is, TM1637HERO, and install it. And you can verify it's there by going back up to the sketch menu, include library, and down at the bottom here, under Contributed Libraries, you can see that we have the TM1637 library. So let's take a look at the code. So the program is quite different from those we've seen before. Here's the included library at the top for the display. And then we're telling the program which pins are the clock and the digital input output of the display. And then we're instantiating the display. And then we just have a couple of shortcuts here for turning all the segments on and blanking them. And there's four digits on their display, which is why this is repeated four times. And FF basically in hexadecimal turns all the bits on. So every segment will light up and zero zero will turn all the segments off. To communicate exactly which segments you want lit up, the library has these definitions for the A, B, C, D, E, F, and G that we saw in the diagram earlier. And so this short array here is basically defining the segments to make the word D-O-N-E done. So in setup, we clear the display. 
In the loop, we set the brightness of the display, we turn all the segments off and wait a minute, and then we turn them all off and wait. Then we have a counter that loops around showing a series of numbers. And this function here, show number deck, is the library knowing itself which segments to turn on to display decimal numbers. So it'll do all that for us. Then we wait, we clear the display, we wait, and then we put up the message done. And that's it. Pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at it in action. So I turned off all the lights so we can see the display easier. Reset the board. You can see it turns all the segments on and all the segments off. Counts its way up to 123. And clears the display and then lights up done. That's it for this lesson. We now know how to use a seven segment display and it's pretty easy, right? Day 17 is all about encryption. I guess the idea is that our communications from the spaceship should be encrypted. So take a look at the code for this day's lesson. And it doesn't make much sense, does it? It's just a bunch of random letters. Or is it? In fact, we have to decode this. So I'm not going to show you anything about this lesson. Uh, you're just going to have to decode it for yourself and see the message that it gives you on the display when you're finished. So have fun with that. Today on day 18, we're keeping the same circuit with the seven segment display. And this time we're adding the rotary encoder. This little device allows you to rotate clockwise or anti-clockwise. It actually clicks in 20 different positions in one circle. Also, it has a switch if you push down, though we're not gonna use that today. It has five pins, uh, plus volts, ground, a pin to detect the switch, and two data pins, which is used to detect each rotation and the direction. And here's the circuit wired up. We have plus and ground, and the yellow and green wires are going to pins two and three on the board. Let's take a look at the program. Some of the code will be familiar from when we worked with the seven segment display. Let's take a look at the differences. We're defining the rotary encoder on pins two and three, and then we're doing the same setup with the display as we did before. The data for all segments on, all segments off, and the data that says the word done on the display. Then we're setting up some variables to track the state of the rotary encoder. The counter is going to count up when we move clockwise, count down when we move anti-clockwise, and we're going to keep track of where it, the, the state of it is in terms of those 20 points on the rotation and also the current direction. In the setup, we're going to set the two encoder pins as input to the board. Uh, we're going to set up the serial monitor and we're going to take the initial state of the rotary encoder and then we're going to just set up and clear the display. Now we're going to do something different in this program. We're going to use interrupts. So basically we're setting up two interrupts on the two pins from the rotary encoder. Each time one of them generates a signal uh, basically one click on the on turning it in either direction, it will call this function update encoder. And um, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. The loop basically shows the value of our counter on the display. 
And when we reach 50, and when we reach 75, it's going to momentarily set the display to all on, just to give us some kind of visual feedback. And when we reach 100, it will write the word done on the display. And here we have the interrupt service routine, updating coder, uh, which is a little more complicated than some of the programs we've seen. It basically looks at the current state of the clock pin and compares it to the last state. And it also determines which direction we're going in clockwise or counterclockwise. And it then, if we're going clockwise, it increments the counter and sets the direction to clockwise. Otherwise, it decrements the counter and sets it to counterclockwise. Now, I then displays that data on the serial monitor, but we're not going to be using that today. And then finally, it remembers the current state, which now becomes the last state next time the interrupt is generated. So let's download that to the board and take a look at it running. So here we are with the display set to zero. And as I turn the rotary encoder clockwise, it should increase. But here's the thing. Mine actually works in reverse. I have to turn it counterclockwise to count up. One, two, and so on. And clockwise turn decrements it. And I can go negative. Negative four, five, six, seven. And I can't figure out why it is that mine's reversed. Be interested to see if you have this same problem. And if you encounter it, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, it doesn't really affect the demonstration. So let's just go in the opposite direction. So as I count up, Eighteen. As I hit 50, it should set the display. Thirty-nine. That sets the display all on. Now that's interesting too, isn't it? It's continuing that output. If I go past 50, it continues. Something is definitely wrong with my circuit, but I can't find out what it is. And then when we hit 75, it does the same thing again. If we go past 75, when we hit 100, it should put in the word done. 95 and then 6. You can see there's a little bit of a bounce on these rotary encoders. If you're watching carefully, you'll see that sometimes it goes up or down one. That's a, a flaw with the mechanics in these. And there is program code you can write to debounce these encoders, but we're not bothering with that for this purpose. 98, 99, done. So there we are, we've learned how to use a rotary encoder and we've used our seven segment display. Let's move on to tomorrow. Our circuit today on day 19 is exactly the same as the one we've just played with, with the seven segment display and the rotary encoder, except this time we've added the buzzer from a previous lesson. And the theory behind this lesson is that we're going to use the secret codes that were generated on day 17. Now, if you remember, I didn't give you any solution or video of day 17 because you need to decode that for yourself. And when you do, you'll get some secret codes. The idea here is that to program the inertial guidance computer of our spaceship, we need to play tones that correspond to those values. So hence the buzzer. Let's take a look at the code. Nearly all the code is the same 
as that that we just looked at in the previous day. So I'm not going to go into any of those details, but just point out the differences. So we've defined three secret values, which were defined in day 17's lesson, that you'll have to find out for yourself. And we're going to use them to define what values we need to input on the rotary encoder to send the tones to the buzzer. The buzzer is set up on pin 10. So the only changes are in the loop. It's very similar to what we did before, except this time when the counter of the rotary encoder encounters each of the three secret values, it's going to play that as a tone frequency on the buzzer. Now I'm going to demonstrate this, but I'm going to put other values in so that I don't ruin your day 17 where you have to decode them for yourself. So I'm going to set them to 100, 300, and 250, no, 500. So let's take a look at this running. So here I am, I've rotated it up to 97, 98. There's the first buzzer. Here we are approaching 300. It plays a different tone. And in fact, we won't go all the way up to 500. I think you get the idea. Okay, that's it for today. Of course, day 20 is another creative day. So there's nothing to show here. But once again, I encourage you, please leave comments below the video, letting me know how you're getting on with your own projects. I'm fascinated to see what you're all up to. So, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this series, please like and subscribe. It helps the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheerio for now.